A close inspection of the Band-Aid dot on pattern tells whether ink was supplied in the right amount. Here is how the plate looks just after the Band-Aid has been applied. When the tints have been laid, the stopping solution is washed off and only the unmasked areas of the plate show the Band-Aid pattern used so much today to impart shaded effects to line drawings. Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. I took these excerpts from an old documentary that is linked on uh, this fine site here, legionofandy.com, recommended by Jared Osborne, um, which gives you all the insights and nooks and crannies of Benday.coloring, um, which was invented by one Benjamin Henry uh, Day Jr., hence the title, Benday Dots. It's a method using uh, translucent uh, screens to apply tiny dots or lines onto the printing plate. Uh, and as I said, it, you can see all the details around this method here on this fine site. I would recommend uh, to go directly to part six if you have not enough time. But if you have a bit more time, it's highly recommended to check all the parts of the, this uh, very interesting documentation. Here are some screenshots of that documentary. I took some uh, snippets of for my Panology right here. And here you can see some of these moiré patterns that are <laughs> very interesting to look at, but maybe not uh, always wanted by the printers. And here's a great overview how all these shades of colors are created by just using yellow, red, blue, and black. Um, in the beginning, they used um, scarlet and not magenta uh, as red. The finishing stages of four color engraving realizes an almost indescribable combination of artistry and technical color understanding. For no matter how excellent the preceding steps have been performed, it remains for the color finisher to balance the plates. One of the things that amazed me the most about this coloring process is how much of a collaborative effort it is. Um, and as I promised in the last video about the Sunday pages of Captain Easy, um, I will try to explore this a bit further with these fine Sunday pages. Uh, in the back of Volume 1, there are some interesting annotations done by Rick Norwood about this coloring uh, process, where he states that Roy Crane did uh, a color guide, and then there were done four Velox, Velox copies that were sent to the color separators. Young women sitting on tall stools at drafting tables created the color by adding black ink to three of the Velox prints, one for yellow, one for cyan, and one for magenta. The fourth Velox print provided the black. They were helped in this task by the artist's color guide and by a colorist who placed a transparent sheet over the color guide and with a grease pencil wrote color values, and so on. And uh, very interesting, and here you can see the color um, guides of Roy Crane, in which he gave the necessary uh, rough but enough information for the colorists how he wants uh, these pages done. And here you can see the finished Sunday page. Very often when you look closely at these panels, it's uh, very obvious that the plates not always were in line, so you have these, this overlapping of colors. Uh, for an instance here, the blue is obviously a bit um, printed too high in, in comparison to the rest of the colors and the yellow as well. So you have, when you ver look very closely, you have these almost psychedelic effects, which I enjoy a lot. But when we are not focused on these colors and, and try to look at all these faults and mistakes, um, our brain erases them out and, and calculates a proper image. Here's another uh, fine example how they painted with uh, Band-Aid dots. From this lush green over there to this violet here, 
The sea has all kind of colors. This is true for all the Sunday pages. For an example, this panel here where the sea is yellow, yellowish green, uh, violet, and darker green, or over here um, you have all and all kinds of brightnesses. Actually, uh, as a fifth color, it's uh, very, um, very important to take uh, white into calculation. For me, the real fun uh, with these uh, Sunday pages here starts when you look at all these details and of course and eventually uh, it will take you much more time to to read all this stuff. This is a small but very interesting panel um, because it showcases a um, gradient of lighter color to darker color not only made with dots but with lines and complex structures as well. And to balance this out a bit we have on the left hand side uh, all the other colors but just a little bit. That's almost um, like a, a master painter would have done it. If you have so much of this color over there, then you have to do a bit more color over there. Another panel that I wanted to showcase right here, uh, not so much uh, because of its beautiful colors, but in this case because of the playfulness of Roy Crane that he shows here. Our heroes are hiding beneath that bridge, th that bridge and uh, the speech bubble uh, of washtops is mirrored as uh, the rest of it in the, in the foreground here. So the big panel that you can see over here is just an example how color can create atmosphere. Uh, this atmosphere of being underwater um, in comparison to see onto the water over there. And scattered throughout the Sunday pages here are uh, Roy Crane's exercises in uh, conveying shadow as well as light. For an example, we have here the shadow of that tree on the wall uh, as a violet um, amidst this red wall here. Just pretty, pretty psychedelic, but it uh, even follows here uh, the roundness of that stone. And as always, we have tiny little fun details like the this uh, dog in the corner that scratches his uh, chin. To be honest with you, I'm very curious how all this recording uh, will, uh, will do because I'm sitting here in the strong April sun and seeing nothing on my mobile actually. But we will see eventually or you will see right now if, it, uh, if it's worth something. Um, this um, panel here is pretty uh, awesome in, in terms of coloring because how here uh, the, the, these effects are used to add a shade on that gray tone, grayish blue tone, and then another uh, so our characters are uh, disappearing in this uh, smoke over there. But overall, of course, uh, despite of uh, some gray here and there, um, this cartoon here is very colorful and uh, but has a very painterly feel to it. Um, looks a bit like von Fauvist would, like Matisse, Henri Matisse would have done a comic maybe. Especially uh, these um, summarized and simplified backgrounds remind me a lot of uh, Matisse. So, to end my little ponderings, about the color here in uh, Captain Easy. Uh, you look just at four or three panels that uh, display all the strengths in terms of coloring uh, that Captain Easy showcases here. So, hope you liked it. I plan to do more uh, videos about band-aid dots.
exploring other great comics with great band aid art coloring. And for me, um, since early childhood, this is the real uh, comic book coloring. Uh, I remember as a child uh, sitting above my comics with uh, some lenses and uh, reading glass and, and trying to figure out how these dots create these colors. Um, so very often I'm a bit disappointed when publishers recolor uh, the old stuff. Not, I'm not always disappointed, but sometimes, because for me, a lot of the charm of the, the old comics, and not only the old comics, um, is due to this Band-Aid art coloring. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye. Here is a magnification of the dot pattern of color illustration. Progressive proofs are of considerable importance to the printer, who will eventually print the illustration for the customer. A proof of each color in its proper printing sequence and a combination of each color printed together in register serves as the pressman's guide for printing fidelity.